Get ready for SBC Championship Saturday here on Vice Pay Per View. Out on the mound, K Kelsey Carter to throw the first pitch up at bat. Leading off, number six, Trish Morgan. It's Trish Morgan. one out. Gets to first base. Kincaid starting early. Excuse me, Fiscal starting early. Trent Marsh on first. Fans in left center field, please get off the bleachers. No one is allowed in the bleachers out in the outfield. There they go. Thank you guys. We appreciate that. Thank you. The plate. First. Cats. first pitch, 1 0 count. Checks back to first base. Zero pitch. Pops this one up. And it's gonna foul out. Sorry. Go frogs. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you. Gotta have it on. Be a TC guy? Sweet, we'll be there. Get out in 98. Okay, I was all ahead of you. Um, yeah, I was there late 80s. Early 90s. Yeah, I, I played baseball, so okay. I pledged Sigma Chi, but I didn't have time. So I, no, 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 no. I ended up became a social affiliate. Yeah, no, no. Sorry, I'm looking for my Hold on, I want to talk to you about TCU, though. Were you there when everything changed? Like it, it turned into like a country club. Gary P. and Madani uh, yeah. and Tom. When I was there, Walk here for Cats. That's going to move Morgan out to second. Two on base here for the Fiscal. I got my truck parked in the front row in the garage. <laughs> Maybe watching half the game from there. Yeah. Now at the plate, you can see the whole field. But Paul they have it. Smith. Yeah, there. You have a kid that plays in this school? Here's Paul. Uh, freshman baseball player. The bat. Oh, takes a shot. This is the right arm. And that will be a back-to-back -back walk here. Now, Bases are loaded. Buddy of mine just plays with Kim K. Who's that? Uh, Gomez. Oh, I went to high school with uh, Alex. Alex. Yeah, yeah. We, 
Uh, we know anything about Kincaid and Episcopal. This is one of the okay, bigger cool. rivalries so in Texas baseball. Jesuit in 87. Wow. I left. <laughs> That's a long story. I went to Jesuit three years and I ended up going to Sharpstown back in the day. Oh, yeah. They had a good program. It was a shitty school, but. It was uh, good for baseball. center field to second, back to first, and that's going to bring a RBI, a baby! Knight Hall with an RBI, and if this one Knights take the lead here in the first half. Knights take the lead. Runners at the corners, one out. And Chris Thornton, the third baseman, at the plate for the Knights. So my Jeep. So it's I used to get a lot of wow. I was a little too old to have it. <laughs> uh, I he used it. And then the mother next to him lathered even more on. It's back of his neck. Because he's facing this way. I'll go get him some water. And another score here for the Knights. 2-0. Two zero. Now we get the update on the score here very shortly. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, walk the, walk the, walk the. Kelsha, Kelsha. Kelsha. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. What? Yeah, I know. I was there all night. I was there last night. Two hours, three one count. And he pops this one back all the way back. And he's going to get a 
double on that play. What a hit. The Knights. Bats are on fire. A double for Hurtley. Kelsey Card on the mound. Two outs, one strike. One runner on second. And pops this one very high out to center field. And that's going to be corralled. Retires the side, and I'll to take a two to nothing lead. Five King Cade. Hunter, Moderson. No, James Richard with the catch. On the mound for Episcopal, the Paul Steve was walked early in the first inning. Fight Lab, we have continuous coverage of this Saturday's championship coverage throughout the day. Just a few moments away from start of the bottom of the first here at the SBC Championship here at Maverick Field. Beautiful facility. And leading off here for King K will be Nico Gomez. First pitch a little bit to the right. Oh, they're going to call that a strike. 1 0 count. They go to center fitter here for Kincaid. And another strike delivered. Oh. Reset here. One, two count. Excuse me, zero two count. Here we are. A little hot.
I'd like to thank you for those that are joining us on our Vibe Live broadcast. And he's going to pop one. This will be a fly ball. Hit this one out to the grounder. Corral swings out the first and a strike there. What a toss. Next up is Andy Guy here for Kincaid. Two on count here, one out. Two two count. And uh, it's gonna be a walk there. And he pops this one up. Right now the Falcons are trailing to the Knights 2-0. to zero. The Falcons had a tremendous year, 8-2 throughout the regular season, but Episcopal 10-3 respectively. These were two teams on the collision here at the championship Saturday. Here's a pitch. Even it up, one one. Well low there and two one count. First three one count. Yeah, yeah. Mm. A little frustration there. Here's Davis Towns, designated hitter.
two runners here for the Falcons and the pitch and a strike delivered there by the Knights He's starting to rise down there on the field. 90 degrees here in Houston. As we are getting closer and closer to that Houston summer. Turns around and slides back to safety a second. It's a pitch, and that's going to pop out left field for a uh, fly ball and that one pops back here Here's a pitch and a strike delivered there. Two strikes, two outs here for Episcopal. Next up at bat is Richie Kosak, first baseman. a ball pitch and this was gonna go out of play here Still in third there for Kincaid. Pops one out to center field, corralled by the Knights, and delivers it back to first base. And that would be the third out here at the bottom of the first. As the Episcopal still lead 2-0 over Kincaid. 
Just pull two, pin head, nothing. Find the AC. Hey, are you going to the possession or are you going to the We get ready for the How are you? physical at nights well. coming up to bat. No, sir. <laughs> Here we are in just a little outside there. Two zero count here. And they're going to another ball here, three zero. That's going to be a strike. Three one count. And he pops his one out to the right side. Heads up. <laughs> I almost lost the freeway. Two count here. Heads up! Heads up! Heads up! Oh, that one nearly caught. Another strike there delivered. And that will be the first out of the inning. Here we are at the top of the second. This will night still lead 2-0. Get in the 
goal. That is scooped up. Wow, what a play. James Richard scooping and delivering that one to first base. Zero zero count. It's a video review. We're under review here, folks. At the plate, Oliver Snell. Two balls, one strike, two one count, two outs here. Three one count. be a walk here for Episcopal. Now the reach is first with two outs. Zero count, two balls. Run on first. Nice hit there. What a throw. Good. And we will change innings.
Kincaid. <coughs> Kincaid this year scores 62 runs, only surrendered 54. Really highly ranked team here. Finished second in district. Only behind Episcopal. Two balls. Oh, what a hit. It's all the way around and they're gonna That was Jack Kozak, right fielder. Pop up, and that's corralled by the third baseman. O'Donnell. Pitch count Peter, there. Three zero. One out. You gotta go, Randy. And an intentional walk here. Let's put Cooper Chambers on first. Chambers on first, goes back to second. Close that will move to second. <laughs> Here's Miles Reader. First pitch. A little low. One zero count. It's a ball. Talk it over with the pitcher. Some people been keeping up with the NFL draft. 
Texans. A huge shout out to Nick Casario for Houston Texans. I've done a phenomenal job in the past couple of days gathering talent. It's much needed for the Texans right now. A couple of steals we got. Harris, middle linebacker for Alabama, could be a day one starter. As we're back to action here. To one count and another ball. Yeah, and a, another ball here. Now be a third ball of the inning. Next up at bat. Pitch a change here for for the Knights. See what they have at the mound. Coach of physical Matt Fox, assistant Andy Straub, making a change with pitcher. Smith is now in left field. And Smith will move to left field. Oh, 
One out. Play, baby. Bases are loaded. Little bunt. And just couldn't get it there. And Kincaid will be on the board. Well, now, two to one, bases remain loaded. Andy Guy. Andy Guy at bat. Bases loaded. I was up to second. And all the way Guys, across the field to third. At first. And another and score here forward. for KK. We're now not at two. Two out. Yeah, two soft contact ground balls, too. Damn. Rashad James up. Second and third. Two out. I love the basin. Davis Towns is up. Here's Towns. Which one was a ball? Oh, knocking this one back to, and that's caught by Smith. Just coming off the mound. What a catch! And we will change innings after this, and we are knotted up at two here, heading to the bottom with the top of the third between Episcopal and Kincaid. Yeah, with no, no more of these 72 degree days. I think we're done. We're going to start top third.
foul out on the left side. Two balls, two stri one strike. Pops is out to center field. And James Richard just couldn't corral at that time. Pablo! Ball here, delivery. I think it's three now. I think so. I think our crowd will be louder then. A walk here for Smith. Two on base for the Knights. Up next is O'Donnell. Still no outs here in the uh, top of the third. Thank you. 
they were telling you know that big, that big left-handed hitter that came out. <laughs> when he came up, okay. they were going, we need to so win first certificate. <laughs> and then they started going, me class, me class. <laughs> Like a, another ball here. Everyone counts. Good time to hit right here. What? Chase back at second. Gonna hit this one out and just gonna get to it over the fence. Not a fly. Small new life. Austin's back. Oh, what a catch there by James Bouchard. Snatching that one out the air. Pitch there. That's Kelsey Carter. One 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 out. Got a run on first base. Here at Championship Saturday, SBC Saturday Championship Saturday. between Kincaid and Episcopal. Wait, come on. Tied up here in the bottom, top of the third. Beautiful even here in downtown Houston, well over 90 degrees. Oh, Hobson's went out to center field and oh, a double play. That was nice. Double play retires the side. 
the shard, chains, showing off the arm strength. For two and a half, they remain at two. Getting ready to change sides here. It'll be the bottom of the third. a few moments here from the start of the bottom of the third. And to welcome some of the new players here to Houston Texans. On their way to Houston, Kenyon Green staying home from A&M. Also pick up Derek Stingley on the touted corners in the draft. And then uh, the steal of the draft might be in Jalen Petrie, safety out of Baylor. So far, Nick Casario. Done a great job since he's become the GM and he's actually completely changed the dynamic of the team moving forward. I'm very excited to see that team come together on the field next year. Also pitching up John Mitchie in the second round was a steal. It's a crazy draft here. Here we go. 2-2 ball game, bottom of third. Kincaid at bat. This is Richard Kozak. He plays first base. Oh, Swan got that one. That's going to be a strike. 1-1. One, one. One, two count. Two strikes. And oh. Here we go. And a strike there delivered. Quickly striking them out there. This will be Jack Klosak at the, at the plate. And another strike there, two strikes. Here's a pitch. First ball. Was well, going to take his time on this one?
Mmm. Two, two. Two balls, two strikes. And another strike there. What a pitch. First ball, one strike. A little too far to the outside. Two one. I think the umpire was. I was waving that one off. And another strike there delivered by the Knights. 2-2. Two, two, two outs. And a ball. And a strike there delivered by the Knights. A very quick inning here at the bottom of the third, and we'll be starting the fourth here right after this. Welcome you back to St. John's as we get ready to go here to the top half of the fourth inning. I'm going to do a little swap brew here on you, a relief pitcher, if you will. Merle Bertrand going to be taking over here for the second half of this ball game. Thanks to Suna Vincott for all of her help as we uh, get things ready to go. 2-2 Two -two ball game going to the top of the fourth inning in this SBC baseball championship game. Houston Episcopal against Kincaid. And through the first three innings of play, it is two runs on two hits, no errors for the Knights. Two runs, two hits, one error for the Falcons of Kincaid. And it'll be Thomas stepping in to lead it off for the Episcopal Knights here in the top half of the fourth inning. Happy to have you with us here on this Saturday afternoon, spending part of your day with us here this afternoon. Give you the defense a set here for the Falcons. It is Roeder, Kugel, and Klosek, the outfield left to right. Chambers, James, Gomez, and Klosek are Klosek, I should say. Jay Klosek out in right field are Klosek at first base. Guy behind the plate and Kelsey on the hill for the uh, Kincaid Falcons. So stepping in on the right side is Tomez. And the first pitch is swung on and fouled off to the right. Strike one. No balls and a strike. Top of the fourth inning, 2-2 ball game. 2022 SBC Baseball Championship. And lifted foul out of play to the right side again. And 
And the count will be no balls and two strikes. O2 no pitch. Just missed off the plate outside, and the count goes to one and two. Eddie Thomas for the one ball, two strike count. Leading off the fourth inning here for the Knights of Houston Episcopal. They jumped out on top of two runs, and that ball swung on, lifted in the air to shallow left field. Ashley's carrying quite a ways. That ball is going to be up against the wall and pulling into second base with the double. It is Thomas. Look like a routine fly ball when it left the bat. You can see the wind blowing out from left field, and it got up in that jet stream and carried, and it's going to be a double here. Thomas is aboard, and that will bring up Levins. So Ty Blevins will step in with nobody out, runner at second base. Knights jumped out with two in the first. Falcons got him back in the bottom of the second inning. That's where we stand now, but the Knights have a runner at second base to lead it off here in the top of the fourth inning. And time is called. I thought time was called, but it looks like the ball was thrown away, and it's going to be moving over to third base. Is going to be Thomas. I think I thought the batter was calling time out, but I think he was trying to tell his runner to hold up. But it was too late, and the throw went out and sailed out in the center field, and Thomas is going to be aboard at third base. So runner at third now with nobody out. And pitch up high. That one swung on and missed. One two pitch. Just misses inside. And the count evens up, I believe, two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch. Poked in the air to shallow center field. Second baseman going back. Outfield coming in, and that ball is going to be caught, I believe. There are about four different players converging around the ball, but I believe it was the second baseman going out and making that play. Gomez hauls it in for out number one. Thomas has to hold it third. And this will bring up DeCozo with a runner at third and one away. Mm -hmm. 
Baron DeCozo. And pitch up high. Pitch bunted up in the air and going to be caught. I believe that was caught. Nice play coming in. I believe that was a shortstop coming in to make that catch. And that'll bring up Phillips with now two away. So here's Phillips with two outs. Thomas still standing at third base here in the top of the fourth inning. Thomas with the leadoff double. He's still stranded there with two out. And the pitch up high. Ball one. Up high again, 2-0. Oh. Two balls, no strikes. Kelsey with the pitch. Lifted foul out of play to the right side, and the count goes to 2-1. and one. Fouled out of play to the right again, and the count evens up now. Two balls and two strikes with two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. Runner at third base. Episcopal trying to regain the lead here in the top of the fourth. And now time is called. And a little miscommunication there. Guy going to go out to talk to Kelsey. And actually, it's going to be a visit from the head coach. Try to talk about what they want to do here. Big pitch coming up here. Big moment in this ball game in the top of the fourth inning. All knotted up to a piece.
the conference is over. And back to it here with the 2-2 pitch coming from Kelsey. Down a little low, and the count even is up 3-2. and two. Big pitch coming up here. Three balls, two strikes. And the ground ball slapped to the left side, and that's going to get out in the left field. That'll score a run. So the RBI single from Phillips just got a pass Chambers out in the left field. That scores a run. That makes it now 3-2 to two in favor of the Knights. Runner at first base with two away. And it looks like we're going to have a courtesy runner over at first base. It'll be Almeida. Stepping in is Trey Organ. With a courtesy runner at first base, Kelsey stays in pitching. 3-2 now, Knights on top. There goes the runner off first, and the pitch down low, unable to make a throw. Nice job by Guy to smother that one to keep it from going back to the backstop but unable to get a throw off, and that'll put a Knights runner at second base with two outs, and the count 1-0 and to Oregon. Foul the third base side, and the count even is up one ball, one strike. Oh, one, one pitch. Tap foul up the left field line, and the count goes to one and two to Trey's Oregon. One run in here for the Knights in the top of the fourth inning. Have to get a couple of baseballs back in play. Umpire's stockpile is running out. Back to it here, runner at second base with two outs. One run in, four Episcopal. Kelsey trying to put out the fire, the one-two pitch. Misses outside low, and the count evens up two balls and two strikes. The pitch. In there, called strike three, and the inning is over. Beautiful pitch. Gets the Falcons out of the jam, but not before one run comes across. The leadoff double pays off. One run on two hits, one run to left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Halfway through this one, new score, Knights on top, 3-2 to two over the Kincaid Falcons. Yeah. Well, there's a wind tunnel right there. 
Again, happy to have you with us here this afternoon as we continue our coverage of SPC Championship year. Started out with the fall games with volleyball and uh, boys and girls volleyball and a couple of football games in the fall. We have boys and girls basketball, field hockey, and uh, boys and girls soccer in the winter. We have boys across last week from Austin over at uh, St. Andrews. And uh, here this afternoon, of course, this baseball game that you're watching, we had the softball game. And the girls lacrosse game ended up about 45 minutes ago. Trying to see if I can track down the score on that one. I saw it come in right before we did the, the switcheroo here. Thanks to Suna Vincott and Shane Shulwinski, our technical support, making it possible to set it up and try this alternative way to bring this broadcast to you, get you a little bit of a better product. <laughs> and Shane, if you're out there, I know uh, you had posted the girls across score earlier, but I can't find it. So if you wouldn't mind posting that again, we'll let folks know. Over at the softball field, over at Episcopal, it is five to nothing, Episcopal on top of St. John's. Kyle Harris with the call of that one for you over there. So 5 nothing Episcopal over St. John's in the top of the fifth inning in the softball matchup. Here it is 3-2 to two as we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Kincaid trying to tie it up again. And the first pitch, curveball misses outside, ball one to Chambers. Cooper Chambers stepping in. And I think it hit him. No, it was a foul tip, foul tip. So one ball, one strike. One one pitch from Phillips. Misses outside and the count goes to two and one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Two and two. Strike four. Now time is called. Blevins, Decoso, and Cotton, the outfield left to right. We'll give you the infield after this pitch. Strike five. Yeah, and their first strike. Two balls and two strikes. I got ahead of myself with the count a moment ago. The pitch. Lifted high in the air to the right side, drifting into foul territory. We'll see if they can make a play on it. And looks like it gets out of play. Chambers... We'll get another crack at it here. Looks like we might have had an injury. I'm just judging from the trainer running out of the field, out of my, out of my line of view. Giving Chase in that foul ball. Three to two Knights on top of the Falcons here in the bottom of the fourth inning in this 2022 SBC championship game. Can't see who the injured player is. The infield was Thornton, Thomas, Oregon, and Cotts from third to first. Smith behind the plate and Phillips on the hill. Virginia, you 
run an event. They're, they're taping it up. I don't know how you can throw with it taped up, though. I'm wondering now, as everybody's come off the field, if we might be under some sort of a lightning delay or something like that. Everybody's gathered around to the right side. That looks hot. <laughs> huh? No, it's breezy here. I'm talking about his unit. His, his, uh... <laughs> Well, they're still standing out on the field, so it's not a lightning delay. I'm thinking that it's still tending to an injured player over on the far side, out of my out of my field of view. So it looks like everything is sorted out. We're getting ready to get back to it here. Phillips sneaking in a couple of extra warm-up tosses after the break in the action. Logan Phillips. And Chambers will resume his at-bat. Two balls and two strikes as a home plate umpire. Thank you, sir. Just to get everybody re caught up. And in there, called strike three. Curveball paints the outside corner. Good looking pitch. And one away, and that will bring up Rotor. So one out, base is empty. For Miles Roeder. <laughs> Soft line drive, and it's going to be one hop to throw over to first, and it is in time. Good play by Oregon. Kind of caught no man's land whether to come in and try to pluck it off a of shoe tops, but feels a clean off the short hop. Tosses over to Katz for out number two. So two outs now. That'll bring up Gomez. Two outs and the base is empty for Nico Gomez. Takes the first pitch in it for call strike one on the curveball. Lifted in the air to the right side. Carrying pretty well, but coming on and drifting over and making the cat. The ball got away. So that'll be an E9. That's going to allow Gomez to stand on first base with two-way. Right fielder Cotton and DeCozo, a little miscommunication there. Looked like Cotton had the play, but biting the sunlight, and the ball glanced off the glove, drops in there. And that puts a runner at first base with two outs for Guy. Andy Guy stepping in here. Eskin K gets a bit of a break. 
Takes the first pitch from Phillips across the outside corner. Strike one. First error of the ball game for Episcopal. Comes at a bad time with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. And we're back. We apologize for that. Had an internet hiccup and lost the feed for just a moment. As we play here now in the top of the fourth inning, is Episcopal able to get out of that jam? And looks like a leadoff walk and now a fly ball lifted in the air to right field. And that's hauled in for out number one. Top of the fifth inning, still 3-2 to two in favor of the Knights. And that pitch misses outside, ball one. Base is empty. Cat stepping in from the left side. Takes the pitch down low. Two balls, no strikes. Swing and a miss, strike one. Two 
balls, one strike. So I'm back to the screen, two and two. Nobody out, top of the fifth inning here in a 3-2 ball game. And now time is called. Adam Katz for the 2-2 count. Misses outside, and the count goes full. Three balls, two strikes. Down low ball four, and it'll be a leadoff walk to put Katz aboard. And with nobody out runner at first, that'll bring up Paul Smith. At the knees for a strike. No balls, one strike. Down low. Good block behind the plate by Guy. Keeps the runner pinned down at first base. Sweetly now out in left field for the Falcons. Pitch misses inside, and the count goes to two and one. That ball lifting the air to the right side. Pretty well tagged. It's going to drop in there for a base hit. Close that got a jump on it, but the ball died quickly. Wind blowing a little bit from right to left, took it away from him, and the Knights have runners at first and second with nobody out, and O'Donnell will step in. So Whitley O'Donnell will step in with nobody out, runners at first and second. Here in the fifth inning, Knights looking for a little cushion to try to pad this 3-2 lead. Fifth hit of the ball game for Episcopal. Time is called. Now pivot, look back to second, nothing doing. Cats at second, Smith at first, nobody out. O'Donnell stepping in. Roder looking in. And that pitch catches the outside corner, says the umpire. Strike one. Little number left side. They go to second for one to throw to first. Have that ball he is out at first, I believe. And I'll be a runner at third base with two away. As the Falcons turn the six four three double play. James to Gomez to close X. So two outs now. Katz moves up to third base and Thornton will step in. Good defense to work there by Kincaid. 
Still have some more work to do to get out of the image. That pitch sails high and over the head of Thornton. Great job by Guy. There's a lot of room behind home plate. If that ball gets by him, the fourth run comes in. So good job by Guy to keep the runner at third base. Two outs, runner at third. After a clutch double play from the Falcons. And that pitch rolls up to the plate. So the count now 2-0 and to Thornton. Paints the outside corner for a strike, 2-1. and one. Three balls, one strike. Cat standing on third base. Two outs, base is empty. Or two outs, runner at third. And that pitch down, low ball four. That'll put runners at the corners. With two outs. And that'll bring up Thomas. And the ball gets loose on the infield. And moving up to second base is going to be Thornton. Alert base running by Thornton. So that puts Knight runners at second and third with two away. Base hit here will score at least one, if not two, insurance runs here in the fifth inning. Cats at third, Thornton at second. Two outs to Thomas. Lifted foul out of play to the right side. And it'll be strike one. A one pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two. 0 and 2 the count. Falcons are one strike away from getting out of the jam here in this fifth inning with no damage done. Oh and two to Thomas. Misses outside. Good take. One and two. Cats are runner at third, dancing down the baseline, trying to distract Rotor. One ball, two strikes. Way up high, and another nice save by Guy. Climbed the ladder for the second time this inning to keep one from sailing to the backstop, and the count evens up two balls and two strikes. Popped up on the infield. And Roeder, the pitcher, going to handle it himself. And that gets the Falcons out of the jam. So in the inning, Knights get a couple of runners aboard, but unable to do anything with them. And we will go to the bottom half of the fifth inning, still 3-2 to two here from St. John's in the 2022 SBC Baseball Championship game. Mark that one down for later. An opportunity lost there for the Knights. Top of the sixth inning over at softball. Episcopal leading St. John 7-1. to one. So Episcopal looking for the baseball softball sweep here. Softball team in good shape, up 7-1, to one, top of the sixth inning, back over at Episcopal School. And here the Knights lead Kincaid 3-2, to two, but we're only in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Four 
Rashad James to lead it off for the Falcons. Yeah, looks at the pitch outside, ball one. Two balls, no strikes. Misses outside, 3-0. and The pitch. That ball hit deep to left field, going way back, 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 and it is going to be gone. Just stayed inside the foul pole. And that is going to be a home run. And we've got a brand-new ball game tied up at three here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Just snuck inside the foul pole. And we are tied up 3-all as the Falcons bench and dugout goes nuts in front of their fans down there on the third base side. And that will bring up Towns and now a 3-3 ball game. So Davis Towns steps in. Misses inside for a ball four. So Towns is aboard. And that'll bring up Klosik. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a courtesy runner over at first base for Towns. Richie Klozik will step in. And we're going to get a visit to the mound here. 3-3 three, three ball game on the home run to tie it up. Fitting that these two teams are meeting in the SBC Championship. The Kincaid Falcons 27-10-1 overall on the season. The Episcopal Knights 23-8. So a couple of good ball clubs clashing here this afternoon in Houston. Looking like we're going to have a pitching change and a couple of lineup changes. Peacock running over at first base now. So holding Peacock the runner at first, still waiting to see how they're going to move everybody around here. 
four Episcopal. Another long conversation. Not exactly sure what all the discussions are about, to be honest. One umpire talking to the Kincaid coach. Now the umpires are going to get together and talk about something else here. All the coaches have left the field. Kincaid, Kincaid play, or I mean, uh, the Episcopal, Episcopal players gathered around the pitcher's mound. As the umpires continue their discussion. And after all that, it looks like we are indeed going to have a pitching change. Well, let's see if we can see who that is coming in to take over. It's Oregon. taking over the pitching duties. So Trey Oregon will take over pitching here in this fifth inning. And looking to see who they move out over to second base. So far the outfield remains the same. Blevins, DeCozo, and Cotton. Completely speculating. It had to have been a discussion on the lineup. I tell you, if you understand the high school baseball substitution rules in Texas, you must have a Ph.D. Nope, they changed it back. Oregon stays at second. So still no word who the pitcher is as the discussion continues. So an unfortunate lengthy delay here as they try to sort this out. Some sort of mass confusion, I can only speculate, it has to do with the lineup and who is still eligible to come in where. Yeah, as the conversation has involved both head coaches, umpires have huddled up a couple of times. And now somebody else is coming in to pitch. What I can tell you for sure is that I won't be coming in to pitch. Looks like Jordan Ross now. Big lanky right-hander. We'll see if they're going to go with that. If they're going to... Change their mind again. So Jordan Ross will take over pitching duties, at least for now. Oregon goes back to second. So it's Blevins, DeCozo, Cotton, the outfield left to right. Thornton, Thomas, Oregon, Katz, the infield third to first. Smith remains behind the plate. And Jordan Ross will take over here. There's nobody out in the bottom half of the fifth inning in a 3-3 ball game. 
Three runs, five hits, one air for Episcopal. Three runs, three hits, two airs for Kincaid. If you're just joining us, Episcopal picked up two runs on the top of the first inning. The Falcons tied it up with two in the bottom of the second. Episcopal scratched out a go-ahead run in the fourth, but left a couple of bases on uh, base runners aboard. And a home run in the fifth inning has tied it up at 3-all. That's where we stand. Peacock the runner at first. Nobody out. And stepping in is Klosik from the right side. All right, I think we're finally getting ready to play baseball again after about a five-minute delay, which is very unusual, but here we go. And lifted high in the air right side. And coming in is the right fielder, Cotton, to squeeze that one for out number one. So one pitch, one out here in the fifth inning. Peacock retreats to first base. Time is called. Swing and a miss, strike one. Foul back to the screen, 0-2 the count. No balls, two strikes. The pitch from Ross. Low and away. Good stab there by Smith. One and two the count. Toss over the first runner dies back. This is Jack Klosik stepping in, by the way. One ball, two strikes. Another throw to first, and that one almost sailed. Cats having to come off the bag and extend out. Misses inside, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, runner at first with one away here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Lifted in the air to the right side, and that one is going to get down into the corner. Running second, heading for third is Peacock, and he is going to be held right there. So a double to right field. Puts Klosik, Jack Klosik with a double to the right field. He's standing on second base. They held Peacock at third. So runners at second and third with one away. And this will bring up Kugel. So a chance for the Falcons to take the lead as Charlie Kugel will step in.
Peacock at third, Clo Jack Klosik at second. Kugel stepping in, still just one out. Infield in, as we're in the late innings. Infield in everywhere. That increases the batter's odds. A pitch outside, ball one. You'll concede a run early. You won't in the late innings. That ball hit hard to left field. That's going to get the, the run in, if nothing else. Going way back, back, and it is caught by the center fielder. Great catch out there by DeCozo. But the run will score. Kugel retreats to second base. And that will make it 4-3 to three in favor of Kincaid. Check that five to three. Ball was not caught. Pardon me. It's hard. It's really hard to see. Ball was not caught. So it's two run score, a two RBI double, and Kugel standing on second base, five to three, as Roeder steps in. That one a little squibber off the bat handle, and it is caught for out number two. So two outs. Kugel standing at second. My apologies. From this vantage point, it looked to me like the center fielder of Cozo made a nice play. But he was only able to field it off the wall. Kugel with the two RBI double. And with two outs now, Roeder will step in. Kugel still standing at second base. And that one lifted foul down the left field line. Strike one. Miles Roeder, the no one count. Swing and a miss, strike two. So the Falcon Bats coming alive here in the bottom of the fifth inning. A solo home run to start things off, a two RBI double. That pitch in there, called strike three in the curveball. Good looking pitch to get out of the inning, but not before three runs come in for Kincaid. They trailed the three to two heading in the bottom of the fifth inning. They'll leave the fifth inning up on top five to three as we'll go to the top half of inning number six. So a big inning for the Falcons. We'll see how the Knights respond here in the top of the sixth inning. It'll be Ty Blevins to lead it off. Lots more baseball and softball coming up next week. As the UIL and TAP schools begin their postseason. A bunch of games in the Austin and Houston areas. In fact, we've got a softball game underway right now. I believe it is a game number three. Between Ridge Point and Seven Lakes, that series knotted up one game apiece. Hockaday winning the Girls Lacrosse Championship over St. John's earlier today on Vibe Live. So here is Blevins stepping in to lead it off and right back to the pitcher. Stabbed by Roeder, and he tosses it over to first base to Klosek. The 1-3 put out, one away. One pitch, one out here in the top of the sixth inning, and that'll bring up DeCozo. Baron DeCozo will dig in from the right side. 
He swings on the first pitch. Let's have fly ball into shallow center field, and it is going to drop in there between everybody. There were about four players converging. None of them could get to it. DeCozo did something right last night. He just bloops the Texas Leaguer in there. Hit them where they ain't. He's aboard. One out, one aboard, and that'll bring up Snell. So Oliver Snell will step in with one out runner and one aboard, representing the tying run here in the top of the sixth inning. He swings on the first pitch and fouls a straight back overhead. Strike one. That ball, line shot. Gobbled up by second. He'll step in the back for one. Throw to first, and I believe it was not in time. I think the ball got away. Nice job by Gomez to field that one. He stepped on the back, but the throw, not in time. So Snell's aboard on the field his choice with two away, and that'll bring up Oregon. Now the umpires are going to talk about this one. And as you would expect, the call will stand. So safe at first base. I can count on one hand the number of times I've seen them change a call like that. Good that they get together and talk about it just to make sure, especially in a championship game. But the call will stand. Four unassisted for the force out. Snell's aboard in the field as choice, and that'll bring in Oregon. And he looks at the first pitch across the outside corner. Strike one. Two outs, runner at first. Again, the slider for a strike and the count quickly. Oh, and two. They've gone final over at Episcopal. The Episcopal Knights are your 2022 SBC softball champions, defeating St. John 7-3. 0-2 pitch. Ooh, that didn't miss by much in the count. One ball and two strikes. So this is our final championship broadcast of the 2021-22 school year for the SPC. As we play here in the top half of the sixth inning. Blocked in the count. He was up two balls and two strikes. Popped up on the infield. Who's going to call it? Coming in is the third baseman, and he will make the catch to retire the side. So in the inning, no runs, one hit, one run to left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Still 5-3, Kincaid on top of Episcopal. Again, my name is Merle Burchand here in pinch hitting duties. Thanks to Sunavin Cott, our technical director, for scrambling, jumping through hoops, and making it possible to hopefully bring you a little bit better product. Shane Shulwinski, our QA, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast to make sure that we're looking and sounding as good as we possibly can. Gentry Williams running the camera for us here this afternoon. As we move to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Knights hoping to keep Kincaid just two runs ahead. The Falcons would like to get a few more insurance runs. There are never enough runs that you can score in high school baseball. Seen some crazy stuff happen over the years. Nico Gomez will step in to lead it off for the Falcons here in the bottom of the sixth inning.
So Gomez will step in from the right side for the Kincaid Falcons. Snell, DeCozo, Blevins, the outfield left to right. Thornton, Thomas, Oregon, and Cotton, the infield third to first. Cats on the hill for the Knights, and the first pitch up high, ball one. One-0 -oh pitch. Swung on, lifted down the right field line. That's trouble if it stays fair, and it is going to be foul ball. So one ball and one strike. Adam Cotts, the pitcher here for Episcopal. Trying to keep Kincaid close, give his team a chance in the top of the seventh inning. The pitch. Curveball bins in there for a strike, one and two. One-two pitch. Hit hard to left center field, pretty well tagged. Going back, and it is... Caught. Kind of disappeared in the up against the fence, but it's a gave it a ride, but a nice catch by the outfield, and that'll be one away. Snell and DeCozo converging out there. Couldn't really see which one of them pulled it in, but it is one out, and that'll bring up James. And he fouls it back. Oh, one pitch. Outside corner for a strike, 0-2. Oh two. 2 count to Rashad James. Good take, misses outside. Count remains 1-2, and two, two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Missed outside again. The count evens up two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Strike three. He got him. And the inning is over. One, two, three. Nothing across. We have played through six here from St. John's. We will go to the top of the seventh inning. The Episcopal Knights have three outs remaining to get two to at least force a tie and head to take us to the bottom of the seventh. And the Kin Kin Kincaid Falcons, on the other hand, are three outs away from being the 2022 champions. It'll be Adam Katz to lead it off here as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Pretty cleanly played ball game. Five runs, five hits, two errors for the Falcons. Three runs, six hits, one errors for Episcopal. As we would expect with a couple of 20-win ball clubs. Miles Roeder trying to close it out here for the Falcons. Possibly our, fi our final few minutes of Championship Saturday here on Vibe Live. I want to thank Commissioner Bob Windham and Jeff McCrary, Athletic Director of St. Andrews, President of the SPC, for inviting Vibe to come out here and do these broadcasts for you all season long. As Cats will step in from the left side to lead it off. And he swings on the first pitch, lifts a sky-high fly ball to center field. Camping out underneath it is Kugel. He'll squeeze it. One pitch, one out here in the top of the seventh. 
Kincaid two outs away. And this will bring up Smith. Paul Smith stepping in from the left side. Needs to get on board. Got to get on board to bring the tying run to the plate. He swings on the first pitch and ground ball to the right side. Scooped up by Klosek, and he'll step on the bag, three and assisted. Two pitches, two outs, and the Episcopal Knights are down to their final out. Kincaid one out away from claiming the championship. It's going to be O'Donnell stepping in now to try to keep the game alive for the Knights. Whitley O'Donnell, the last chance here for Episcopal. Steps in from the right side with two outs and the base is empty. Takes the first pitch in there for call strike one. Hit in the air to the left side. And that ball is going to drop in there for a base hit. So O'Donnell's aboard, and that will bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Thornton. It's a good piece of hitting by Whitley O'Donnell to keep the game alive. Thornton will step in. He represents the tying run here in the top of the fifth inning, the top of the seventh inning. Swings on the first pitch and fouls it back. Strike one. No balls in a strike to Andrew Thornton. O'Donnell at first. In there for a strike, and the count 0-2, and, and now the Knights are down to their final strike. Roeder trying to close it out. No balls, two strikes. The pitch, down low, ball one. Good waste pitch, good take by Thornton, one and two the count. Hot, muggy day in Houston. One ball, two strikes, the pitch. Up high, ball two. Roder working from the stretch. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Just missed, low and away, and the count is full. Great, great job by Thornton. He fell behind in the count, 0-2, and, and has now worked the count full. So three balls, two strikes. That ball, tap foul, we will do it again. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. Ground ball left side coming on is third baseman. He's going to gobble up the throw to first, and it is in time. Nice play by Chambers. The 5-3 put out over to Klosek, and that will do it. The Kincaid Falcons are your 2022 SPC championship winners in baseball by a final score of 5-3. Five, five runs, five hits, two airs for the Falcons. Three runs, seven hits, and one air for the Episcopal Knights. So the season will come to an end. And a pretty good ball game, as you would expect from these two class programs here at St. John's. And that is going to do it for us. 5-3, to three, your final score. Kincaid with the win. So Hockaday, your girls across champion. Houston Episcopal with a 7-3 win over St. John's in softball. And now Kincaid over Houston Episcopal 5-3 to three in baseball to round out our coverage of the SBC Championship Games here on Vipe Live. I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks again to Suna Vincott, Shane Shawinski, Gentry Williams, Shane Hildreth, everybody over at Vipe Media. My name is Merle Birch, and signing out from St. John's, your final score once again, 5-3. Kincaid, your winner. Congratulations to the Falcons and the Knights on a tremendous season here in 2022. We'll see you next time right here on Vipe Live. Good night, everybody.